Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are in the far eastern scattered islands building a clan citadel. This is an extremely large build designed for a medium to large size clan, and will take full use of mods in decoration, which you can see on screen now. As usual, this build was previously streamed live on Twitch, so if you'd like to see how I construct my builds and have input on them in real time, feel free to drop me a follow on Twitch for my next stream on Monday the 13th of July at 2pm BST. As usual, this video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. You can get 70% off NordVPN when you visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt or use code eradyt at checkout. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about NordVPN. So, seeing as this is indeed a speed build, let's get right into it. As usual with my speed builds, I'll be going through my thoughts and ideas during the building process, what I'm aiming for, and how I achieve those aims. I started off with a simple material palette of reinforced stone and stable ceilings. I was initially planning on using arena, however, if we're being honest, I do use arena a bit too much, and reinforced stone offers a similar feeling whilst also having a more comfortable interior material and offering slope pieces, ramps and roof items. For some reason, I always tend to think of reinforced stone as quite a basic and in some ways ugly material, but on the occasion I do actually choose to use it, I remember that it's actually quite well rounded and versatile, and it works well for a lot of different builds, especially fortified ones like this, or my previous prison build. I chose to use stable floors rather than insulated wood or frontier, as stable offers a nice neutral shade of wood without being too rough like insulated wood, or too dark and moody like Frontier. Of course, you can swap these materials around for whatever you want, really. You can make the entire citadel out of Arena and Frontier, or Yamatai and Kitan, I mean, <laughs> hell, you could make it out of Sandstone if you hate life that much. When constructing the citadel, I wanted to make it a varied structure in terms of size and height, building different interconnected rooms on various parts of this island. This island is actually perfect for that, as it has multiple different plateaus that are of various sizes and elevations, meaning you're guaranteed to achieve a height variance across the build. I mean, if I wanted to, I could have constructed this citadel as one massive block, with internal corridors connecting all the different rooms and sections. However, given how tall this island is, and how it's surrounded by smaller islands and of course, the ocean, it seems stupid to sacrifice some of the impressive visuals that this island offers. By connecting the various smaller parts of the build together with external bridges and walkways, it takes advantage of the impressive and often somewhat scary views provided by the island. Realistically, whilst this build is quite large, you could quite easily make it even larger. Whilst the citadel includes a gatehouse, barracks, guardhouse, watchtower, workshop, main hall and dock area, you could very easily expand the build out even further and include even more room for things I haven't included, such as trebuchet platforms, animal pens, a map room or more. There is plenty of room for expansion here, and considering how close the citadel is to the far eastern shore, you could probably quite easily build a bridge across and reinforce that bridge, to make travel to the land easier but also harder to attack the citadel. With proper archer emplacements manned with thralls, approaching the citadel could be a certifiable death sentence. So I think that's about all I have to say for the construction phase of this build. As usual, I'll be back for the furnishing phase where we'll walk through the finished build. Again, don't forget to drop me a follow on Twitch to see my builds live before they're uploaded to YouTube, and don't forget you can get 70% off NordVPN when you use code eradyt at checkout or go to nordvpn.org slash eradyt. So, with that, enjoy the rest of the construction phase, and I will see you in the furnishing phase.
finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to, of course, furnish. Disembarking our boat and landing on the dock, we start the trek up the island to the gatehouse. I've lit the build all across with very traditional lighting options through hanging and wall braziers, which I think adds to the aesthetics and atmosphere of the build. The journey up the stairs to the gatehouse is a long one, and gives plenty of time to take in the views of the eastern shore, the surrounding ocean, and of course the huge citadel looming above. Reaching the gatehouse, this is a buffer between the citadel and the staircase that helps to increase security. The gatehouse is in view of the barracks and the watchtower, so guards can send signals between the posts of incoming visitors or indeed attackers. Next we reach the barracks, which is attached to a small guardhouse. This is where guards will again be able to check who is coming in, and of course fight off potential attackers. The barracks are also used to store various weapons and armour for the guards. The guardhouse is a bit of a smaller room where guards can sleep and relax between shifts. Nothing too fancy here, just a simple place to rest. Heading up the barracks stairs and through the gates, we reach the main citadel. This is the single biggest building in the base, and is where more of the luxurious features of the build are located. The main body of the citadel holds the entrance area, dining room, and kitchen. Thank you. 
Underneath the stairs is the small storage area. Had I built this section of the citadel higher, I probably could have included an underground vault, which would have been pretty cool, but this sort of storage area will have to do. I don't think it's awful. I think it works quite well. Next we reach the library and showroom. This is a room of relaxation and learning where various items the clan has found are put on display. Plenty of books are also stored here, covering almost every topic from religion to alchemy to combat, botany to magic, and everything in between. There is a small outdoor area attached to the library that could be used for a variety of things, but I've kept it fairly empty as just a viewing bay. Heading upstairs we reach the bedrooms. If I'm being honest this area could probably be better, as it's fairly bare bones and could be better designed to provide a more comfortable place to sleep for the clan members. Heading into the right side room we reach the lounge. This is a small room of relaxation, including some comfortable seating and a fireplace to relax at the end of a hard day. The lounge is attached to another small guardhouse, which is further attached to the watchtower, that provides security to the citadel. Enemies can easily be spotted from the watchtower and signalled using the ominous warhorn. The tower itself sits quite high up and provides a good viewing platform for watching over the surrounding ocean, shore, and of course the stairways up to the citadel.
Heading out of the back right door and down the elevator, we reach the workshop. This is where all the manual work of the Citadel is carried out, with workers labouring day in, day out to provide the Citadel with valuable resources. This workshop includes carpentry, blacksmithing, smelting, tanning and alchemy, and is able to produce plenty of resources for the clan. Even the workers here have a bedroom above the smithy, a place to rest after a hard day's work. And there we have it, a clan citadel on the far eastern scattered islands. Thanks for watching, a few people have asked for a large clan base, and whilst this area might not be the most practical in terms of how easy it is to actually get to, I think this citadel provides a huge area for a decent sized clan to live and prosper. As I mentioned earlier, this video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. If you want to stay safe on the internet and ensure your location can't be tracked by shady individuals, all whilst being able to unlock region-locked content like Netflix, BBC, ITV, Hulu, HBO and more, whilst maintaining blazing fast internet speeds, NordVPN is perfect for you. When you use my link or discount code, you can get 70% off a 3-year deal, which comes out to $3.49 a month or about £2.80 if you're in the UK, which is a bargain price for such a great service. The software is a small download and it's easy to use, one click and you are both connected and protected and you have full access to the internet. Nord also has very strict policies on protecting your data, meaning you can browse in confidence. Visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt to claim this huge discount, or use code eradyt at checkout to get the best VPN service available on the internet, and also help to support me and the channel at the same time. As always, a big thanks to Nord for sponsoring the video. If you've enjoyed this video leave a like and let me know in the comments below if you have any build suggestions for future videos. As usual, absolutely anything is welcome. Don't forget to both follow me on Twitch and join the fun on our Discord through the links in the description. And don't forget you can get 70% off NordVPN where you use code eradyt at checkout, or you can go through my affiliate link in the description and the pinned comment below. YouTube is currently my full time source of income. So if you enjoy the content and would like to help support the channel so I can continue to put out the best content possible, do consider becoming a patron. There are multiple tiers of support from $1 to $20, offering many different benefits from a mention in every video to Discord roles, and even sneak peeks of every new video before anyone else. During the lockdown, most of us are still in. The video previews that are usually restricted to the $20 tier will be open for the $10 tier as well, so everyone's got a little bit more content to enjoy. The link to my Patreon is in the description, so if you'd like to support the channel feel free to consider becoming a patron. On that note, a thanks to our patrons Sammy, Sadialot, Randar, Dawnfox, MK Pantheon, and M. Autumn. If you're new here, feel free to check out the rest of the content on the channel. There are new Cone Nexiles videos coming every Wednesday and Sunday, so if you like what you see, subscribe and ring the notification bell to be the first to see the next video, and to join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.